Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be playing Trailmakers. I'm Gotham Star and make sure to like and subscribe, but don't feel obliged and let's get into the tutorial. So today I'm going to be teaching you in Trailmakers how to make something called the hinge drive or the hinge glitch. And this glitch basically allows you to go really fast forwards with very high acceleration. And you may have heard of the UFO engine, it's not quite as powerful as that with top speeds, but its acceleration is much better. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into build mode, quite obviously. Then we are going to get these little things. And these are what is going to allow us to do the glitch. Now, the most efficient way to do this glitch, some people will tell you to do like four of these in a line, place them on top of each other like this, and then do something like this, where you do another two there. Don't do that. That is not the best way to do it. So the best way I've found to do it, by my invention, which goes around about... 4,000 something kilometers an hour if you put it at its max speed and get a good launch because this thing doesn't always get the best launch you possibly can get because it's all done through the hinges and the hinges are not reliable when you're doing this glitch but they should be consistent enough that you won't like break down randomly and stuff like that you'll just like maybe have a little pull in one direction anyway the most efficient way i found to do this is if you get these hinges then what we're going to do is we're going to get whatever side is on the right, so in this case the red side, and set that to RT. And then we're not going to set this, because if you do that, then what I'm going to show you later will basically make the invention implode. Now we're going to set the speed to the maximum possible, set the steering help to nothing, so that the faster you go, it will still go at the same speed, as in like it will still accelerate as fast if you're going at a higher speed and we're going to set this angle to whatever you want I so, so that way the angle works is the higher the angle the more speed you will have but the less consistent it will be so so i have a 90 degree angle on these hinges what will happen is a lot of the time when i launch it one side is going to be different to the other and it's going to pull you in that direction however the lower angle you have the less speed you will get but also the more consistent it will be because the less it can pull in one direction if that is uneven. So, you're going to set this angle to whatever you want. I'm going to personally set it to around about 40. My best invention doesn't use that angle, but just for this tutorial, I will say 40 because I'm not going to share my best invention, quite obviously, because it's a uh, first in the air race. If you really want it, I might show you the second best version of it and just leave a comment, I guess, if you want to see that. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to use settings similar to these. Um, so, say the green side was over here, you put that as RT. And then we're going to put six of these in a row. So that's five and then six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to get, put another row on top of these. Then we're going to copy these again, rotate them twice so that they're like this, and put a two by two gap in between. Now, what you should see is these pull that way. And these pull that way, so they're pulling in opposite directions, and that's what you want. Now, this alone will not be enough. However, what I'm going to show you now is how to get them to work properly. So, we're going to get a 2x4 on the back of here, another 2x4 here, and then we're going to get two 1x2s, because there is no 2x2 two two block for some reason. Then, we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to do this. So, now these should be identical on both sides. Now, one big thing with this glitch, you need to make sure that these blocks on the ends of the hinges, which actually turn, need to not touch the main build, because otherwise the, it will just get really glitchy and not in a way you want. So, then what we're going to do is we're going to get any seat you want, so I'm just going to use the cockpit because it looks quite nice, especially for an aeroplane and stuff like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, here, we're going to set up a stabilisation system. So. The way I create my uh, hinge glitch planes, because they're quite unstable in the roll, I will create a very strong roll stabilizer and then use yaw instead of roll, because that way it's a lot more stable, in my opinion. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to get two more 2x1s and place them here. Then, we are going to get an angle block or an angle sensor. Then, we're going to configure this. So it's 179.5, I just prefer that over, some people will say 180, 
but if you put it at 179.5 there's 0.5 degrees where it won't be doing anything and that just means that you won't it's a lot less likely to end up in a feedback loop then we're going to set that angle to 90. now once you've done that we're going to actually not have that there we're going to place that here then we're going to get these blocks now these are flat connectors we're going to turn this so it attaches to the bottom of this block and as you can see that doesn't attach to these pretty obviously but what it does is it means i can connect another block here to the main invention without connecting it to this bit, side bit that's very important if you connect anything to these blocks here the entire thing will just not work and now what we're going to do is we're going to get another angle sensor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get two more 2x1 two blocks. And we're going to connect these on the sides using flat connectors like this. And then we're going to get... So these are 1x2 flat connectors. And then we're going to do the same thing except we're going to move them one forwards like this. In fact, no, no we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Uh, then, we're, sorry, we're going to get a helicopter engine, stackable helicopter engine. I prefer to use stackable just in case I want to build on the end of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this so neither of these do anything. And then we're going to set the speed to 10 just so it's more stable. In a lot of inventions, you do not want to set it to 10 because if you set it to 10, what will happen is it will create another feedback loop because it's too powerful. However, because there's so much roll stabilization you need, that feedback loop is you, you, you would prefer having a feedback loop rather than just having your invention turned to the side for no reason. Anyway, this angle sensor is the same as this one currently. What we're going to do is we're going to set this one to minus 90 rather than 90 because then it looks in the exact opposite direction. And we're going to connect both of these to the helicopter engine. Now, this is a bit of trial and error here. It will only take two attempts. And what you're going to do is you're going to set one of these to minus output and one of these to plus output. So this is already at plus, and then we're going to set this one to minus. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test it. So if I spawn this on its sides, it should auto stabilize to the right side. However, as you can see, it's not auto stabilizing to the right side. It's up stabilizing so it's upside down. So what we're going to do, change these outputs to be the opposite. So this one's now minus instead of positive, and this one's positive instead of minus. And now this helicopter engine will stabilize us. And it's just a very simple stabilization system. Now, here comes the part where we get it to actually work. Because at the moment, if I do this, as you can see, it's not very fun, is it? You're just going to end up spinning. So this is how you get the glitch to actually do forward momentum. So what you do, you're going to get good old fat connectors. Because flat connectors are the best, as everyone knows. We're going to put one on the bottom of this like this. However, I'm actually going to use a 4 because I just prefer them because we're going to do quite far away. So you want to put it on the very end of here. You can put it one block in, but I just prefer to put it on the very end. And then I'm going to do the same on the other sides. Now, we're going to build these back using a system like this where you have one flat connector, then another flat connector. I'm going to build these back a little bit. Hang on. Oh, I did that a little bit wrong because I do need to actually move them since they're one, one by fours. I'm going to go build it back to about there. That should be good enough. Now what we can do is we can copy this onto the other side. So if I just go like that, I can go like this. Copy. And then bring it to here. Now, we want this one to be on the bottom like this one rather than what it is at the moment. So we're going to put one more on the end here. So we're just going to copy this and do that. And then we're going to bring this to the other side and do that. Now, depending on how many tail fins you want, etc., you can mess around with this yourself to get the maximum speed possible, but I like to put three tail fins on each side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a 1x2 block, place it here. In fact, no, I'm going to place it here. I'm going to do the same on the other side. In fact, no, I'm not. I'll copy it once I've done finish this. Then what we're going to do, and you have to have it so there's two blocks here because I'm going to show you how to no drag it. And that's basically a bonus in this video. Um, then we're going to get the lift and drag. However, if you are doing this glitch, you kind of do need to already know how to do no drag glitch because, yeah, otherwise it's going to be a lot slower. You don't need to know it, but you probably do as well because otherwise you wouldn't be looking this glitch up because it's quite, uh, it's not very well known. So what we're going to do is we're going to place these power simple tail fins one block back like this so then we can no drag them quite a lot easier. We're going to do the same here. 
and the same here. And I'm going to copy this to the other side, like this. And now, if I show you, it goes forwards. And as you can see, it does pull to the right slightly. That's just because of how unstable the hinge glitch's nature is. Because if you can see, the, where, the, where the hinges are actually being pulled apart, one's being pulled apart more than the other side. And that's nothing to do with my issues or anything like that. That is simply just because of the nature of the hinge glitch, because these aren't meant to be being pulled out like that. I don't know if you can tell. And you do have to make sure all of these stone hinges are set to the exact same degree angle, because otherwise they might glitch out. So now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make it a lot faster. So if you see at the moment, it's only going 678 on a good launch. And that was a good launch. I know what a good launch looks like. Just. So now we're going to no drag this. What we're going to do, if you don't know how to do no drag, we're going to use these attachable blocks. This is how no drag works. So the way no drag works is it's basically the calculations for the aerodynamics um, is set as you come out of build mode. So once you come out of build mode, if you detach these blocks, it almost creates like a void space where the blocks were. And that means that on the actual invention itself, there's absolutely no aerodynamics on it, which makes it go a lot faster. So what we're going to do, set this to make scrap, and we're going to use this singular block to copy on this entire invention. Because otherwise, well, um, you will have to keep setting it to make scrap over and over again, and that's just going to be annoying. So we're going to copy this. I'm going to copy it to all these bits. Make sure everything facing forward. So I can turn on aerodynamics to show you. No, not in mirror mode, thank you. I want to turn that off. Aerodynamics. Everything with aerodynamics should have little red things with detachable blocks in front. Or at least something attached to a detachable block in front. Now what we're going to do. We're going to fix this crop bit. Because as you can see it's got green lines. We don't want those green lines. It would normally be good if we weren't no dragging it. We want everything to have... Um, to be no dragged and this isn't no dragged on this one spot here so what we're going to do we can't put these on it because as you can see it doesn't attach what we're going to do we're going to use tube blocks i just prefer them because they're a lot more usable in like more compact creations when you're doing no drag glitch i do we're going to do this now once you've got that set up we're going to get these one by one tube pieces I'm just going to copy them like this. And as you can see, this cockpit no longer has the drag, it's these. And these are connected to the hatchable blocks and not the main invention. So if I attach them, that entire cockpit now has no drag on it. We need to fix this bit here too. So the way I would normally do this is I would just get a detachable block and place it in there like this. Because the detachable blocks, it doesn't matter if they are attached onto the sides of these because you detach them before you take off anyway. So then what we're going to do is set these to make scrap as well because I didn't copy it. Now all of these are set to make scrap and all that, which is good. And these don't actually need to be set to make scrap. Only these top two actually need to be made scrap because these automatically make themselves scrap even with this off. It's what they're attached to, which doesn't. Now for the last thing to no drag, everything in the front's no dragged. We want to no drag this. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to get these attachable blocks. We're going to go here. We're going to make scrap. We're going to go like this. And you want to make sure that there's no, there's absolutely zero green lines on these tail fins. We're going to do the same here, and the same here. And now we can copy that to the other side. And once every single, um, once every single aerodynamic line in the build mode, by turning on this feature under advanced aerodynamics, once everything is either um, red because of a detachable block, or a different colour because of something attached to a detachable block, is done what we're going to do we're going to go out of build mode and that's fully no drag now so it's going about 670 kilometers an hour before if i remember correctly now if we attach these blocks it looks exactly the same as before but it's no drag now if i take off as you can see that was a really bad launch so i'll just take off again one sec and now as you can see it goes a lot faster now this isn't fully stabilized i actually don't know why it's not fully stabilized i think i made a small mistake and that's because of those no drag blocks i placed in the center so we just quickly fix that these little no drag blocks are stopping these from actually going and doing what so actually you need to not do that you need to find a different way where they're not connected to the sides because apparently even when you delete them it glitches out and that's just a weird quirk with the hinge glitch i guess so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use two pieces again you guessed it and this time, I'm going to place these on top, like this. 
And this isn't no dragging anything on its own, but then we can use the two pieces to go down there without attaching to the actual hinge blocks. So, on conclusion, these hinge pieces have to be attached to absolutely nothing other than the tail fins. Because otherwise it will just completely glitch out. So, now we're going to go down to the tube pieces. We're going to get the tube elbows again. We're going to go like this. We're going to go like this. And then, I believe it's a 1x3 gap. Let me just check. That's a 1x4 gap. So, we'll get the 1x4 tube. Go like this. Bring it up. Go down. And now that's fully no drag without being attached to the hinge sides. Now, when we no drag it, it goes forwards. And as you can see, it's well over double the speed. And although it's not have, it doesn't have as high of a top speed as the UFO engine, it does accelerate much, much faster. And you can make much better versions of this glitch as well if you want to. Personally, I don't really need to. You can, though, so try that. And as you can see, as I've just shown, it is, due to the hinges, unreliable in terms of top speed because last time it was 1,400, this time it's 1,200. Actually, because of the nature of the glitch, you can't really stop that. However, as you can see, it does work. That's the end of that part of the video, anyway. What I'm going to tell you now is how this hinge glitch works. So, this is a hinge drive, hinge glitch, whatever you want to call it. And the way it works is, these hinges here pull these blocks which aren't connected to the main build out. And normally that wouldn't do anything, but because you've got all these hinges here doing the same thing, it basically pulls the front part of the hinge, which, so, so a little bit more context, hinge blocks have two different weld points rather than, so it's, they're two different welds. So this block here is only one weld, these blocks are two welds. And what that means is the front weld gets ripped out of the second weld, weld without when it's not meant to by these hinges here. And then when that happens, it creates an absolute massive amount of force. And then we change that force into frontal, um, frontal movement, frontal acceleration using these back tail fins. And that is basically how the hinge glitch actually functions and works. And the only reason I've got the stabilizer is so it doesn't roll over when I'm in the air. And now what you can do once you've got this glitch, you can do whatever you want in it. Following the no drag steps so that everything's no dragged. And you can make like your systems so with like a rotating servo and then tail fins on top on the front to make it turn left and right. Um, you could do roll so you could delete this. Although I don't advise you to do that because it's not as good as your. Because when you roll it's very unstable. Or you could, and you can also do pitch by doing pretty much the same thing, just on the sides with like the same or with um, modular wings. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I'm, I'm Vox Make sure to subscribe and like, subscribe and like, but don't feel obliged. And that's it. Goodbye.